When it comes to game development, we can divide the process into two parts. The first one is creating the assets, and the second part is assembling the assets and coding in a game engine. And while game development definitely takes skills and patience, the software chosen can have a massive impact on the process and the outcome. So is Blender used for games? The answer is yes. Blender is used in game development ranging from AAA titles to indie games. Blender is effective for assets creation which involves modeling, sculpting, UV unwrapping, baking, texturing, rigging and animation. In this video, we're going to discuss is a Blender a good choice for creating assets for game development needs. So without further ado, let's get started. This video is brought to you by Learn to Make Looping Animations, a Blender course that teaches you to create four high quality looping animations step by step. Check it up in the link below. Modeling. When it comes to modeling, it can take an incredible amount of time to get every detail just right for the vision that the game developers have in mind. And when using Blender for modeling objects, people and environments, Blender is a good choice for that because it has all the necessary tools and also a set of modifiers which are automatic operations that affect objects in a non-destructive way. And also you can use some modeling add-ons that are created by the Blender community like hardtops and box cutter. You can even use Blender new geometry nodes feature to create props and environment elements procedurally to simplify the process and gain some time. And while modeling may seem as simple as the actual task of creating something that looks good, this simply isn't the case because game developers have to consider the hardware processing power of those who will hopefully play the game once it's complete, like gaming console and mid-range gaming PCs. And that means we need to create a low poly version of a high detailed object in order for the game to actually run efficiently. Luckily, Blender is more than capable of creating high poly and low poly models you can even make the low poly model look like the high poly model using the process of baking which we are going to talk about later. Sculpting Sculpting is mostly used for characters in game development because it offers the freedom for users to create something really special and unique, topped with plenty of detail. Blender has a really good sculpting system. It's not as good as ZBrush which is the industry standard but Blender offers a lot of brushes and tools that allow you to create amazing results. You can also enhance the power of Blender sculpting system by using some of Blender sculpting add-ons that are available in the Blender market. UV unwrapping UV unwrapping is absolutely essential when it comes to game assets creation because the upcoming parts of the creation process rely heavily on it. Blender offers all the necessary tools and features to create the UV map for your model, whether it's a complex character or a simple environment asset. As a side note here, many artists find that this process is time consuming and tedious as it's far more technical than creative when compared to tasks such as modeling or sculpting. So it's really a good choice to rely on Blender add-ons that automate UV unwrapping especially if you are working on lots of characters and props. Some examples of these add-ons are Zen UV and AutoPack Master Pro. Texturing and Shading Texturing and shading can either make or break the aesthetic of your assets entirely, as they will have a huge effect on the look of your final models and with Blender you can create very good textures for your assets by painting directly on the mesh or by using external textures that you can apply on your model. You can also create your own procedural texture within Blender by using the shader node system. Also you can reduce the time spent on shading and texturing by using Blender add-ons that offers libraries of procedural materials that you can use for your props and environments. Blender also offers a real-time render engine called Eevee 
which allow you to see your shaders and textures applied on your model in real time. Baking Maps Blender is capable of baking lights and textures and different maps used in a PBR workflow. And one of the most important maps is the normal map, which is a texture mapping technique used for faking the light of a bump and dents. It is used to add details without using more polygons. You can create a normal map in Blender by having the high poly version and the low poly version of your model placed exactly in the same position in space. Also you need your model to be UV unwrapped so the resulting image is properly fit to the model. The process of creating these maps in Blender is a bit time consuming, especially when compared to the industry standard substance painter, but I think with a little bit of practice, you can do this just fine. Rigging and animation. For many game developers, rigging and animation are by far one of the most intimidating aspects of asset creation. Thankfully, Blender makes this process far more enjoyable because it offers a variety of tools and features that simplify the process without losing its effectiveness. And as always, you can increase the power of Blender animation tools by using add-ons that the Blender community offers to help speed up some animation processes. Also, by using Blender, you can rig and animate all your assets and characters and then export those animation to the game engine by either using Blender built-in exporting tools or by using some other Blender add-ons. Now while Blender may not be the first choice for major game titles, it is definitely a fantastic choice for any game developing team who is starting out or finding their feet in the industry. It is a very popular choice for countless indie developers many of which have resulted in the creation of games and sequels that are not too far off from major titles in terms of their visual appeal and playability. Blender is certainly a great choice for creating games, particularly if you are just getting your foot into the doors of the gaming development industry. That's it for this video, tell me in the comments below what do you think about the use of Blender in game development? Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.